So GPT 5.2 is here, and let me tell you, it does not disappoint. OpenAI calls it their most advanced frontier model yet, built for professional knowledge work and long-running agents. And when you look at the benchmarks, you can see why. GPT 5.2 scores 70.9% on GDP Val, a benchmark that essentially measures how often the model beats real industry professionals on well-specified knowledge work tasks. Things like generating spreadsheets, building PowerPoints, analyzing documents, etc. Now, I couldn't find the scores of other Frontier models on this benchmark. All we seem to have publicly are the numbers from September, which include Opus 4.1, Grok 4, Gemini 2.5, and GBT5. And obviously, none of those are Frontier anymore. But still, even using those older numbers, we're looking at roughly a 22% jump in state-of-the-art performance in just a few months. That's insane progress for a benchmark built around actual productivity tasks, and we're already long past the human expert baseline. Now, going back to the full benchmarks, what's kind of annoying is that OpenAI doesn't include the scores of other models here, just GBT 5.1. So we're going to be referencing Gemini 3 Pro's benchmarks, which also includes Claude 4.5 Sonnet. So starting with the coding benchmarks, you can see we have some very solid improvements. 55.6% on SWE Bench Pro and 80% on SWE Bench Verified. Google's table doesn't include SWE Bench Pro, but on SWE Bench Verified, GBT 5.2 score beats both Gemini 3 Pro and Claude 4.5 Sonnet. I do think Claude 4.5 Opus still edges it out slightly though. Then we've got 92.4% on GPQA Diamond, PhD level science questions. Again, this beats both Gemini 3 Pro's 91.9% and crushes Claude 4.5 Sonnet 83.4%. Next, 100% on Amy, no tools. So that benchmark is basically done at this point, which is not exactly surprising. Then 40.3% on Frontier Math. This one is actually a pretty crazy score. Frontier Math is literally a compilation of the hardest math problems experts could come up with. The previous high score was 37.59% held by Gemini 3 Pro. So even a small bump here is huge. And GBT 5.2 adds almost three whole percentage points. There's also this tier 4 tab for, I guess, even harder problems. And on those, Gemini 3 Pro actually beats GBT 5.2, scoring 18.75%. But now, they truly save the best for last, because GBT 5.2's Arc AGI scores are actually nuts. 86.2% on Arc AGI 1, and 52.9% on Arc AGI 2. These results were verified by Arc Prize themselves, and they even show that GBT 5.2 Pro High gets 90.5% on Arc AGI 1 at $11.64 per task. They say this represents about a 390x efficiency improvement in just one year, which is actually insane. And on Arc AGI 2, GBT 5.2 Pro manages to get up to 54.2% at $15.72 per task. So yeah, we still have a long ways to go before these models match human efficiency, but clearly they're getting better and better at generalizing. If you didn't know, the Arc AGI benchmark is literally designed to test problem solving in completely unseen environments, which many researchers think is the core ingredient of artificial general intelligence. And the speed at which this benchmark is getting saturated, especially toward the end of this year, is just wild to watch. It really feels like it's only a matter of time before every benchmark gets saturated. Also, if you're wondering what its score is on Humanity's last exam, well, they conveniently left it out of the main benchmark table, but included it at the end here. It scores 34.5%, 3 percentage points below Gemini 3 Pro. I'm guessing that's why they didn't include it. So those were the benchmarks. But the main thing that really stands out with this model is its ability to complete real-world tasks. Here are some comparisons between GBT 5.1 and GBT 5.2 on actual knowledge work tasks. The first one is a workforce planner. The prompt was, create a workforce planning model with headcount, hiring plan, attrition, and budget impact. And I mean, as you can see, GBT 5.2's output just looks way more professional. Here's another one. The model is told it's an investment banking analyst. 
and it has to put together a waterfall analysis to understand ownership and returns for founders and existing investors. And in this case, it's not just that it looks cleaner, which it does, but according to OpenAI, GBT 5.2 actually got all the calculations correct, unlike GBT 5.1. And on this last one, they're asked to generate a project progress summary. And again, GBT 5.2's output just looks way more polished, readable, and ready to hand to a client. So OpenAI has really been leaning into the real world capabilities lately. And I mean, if you can't already see it, this is the beginning of the end for white collar workers. White collar human workers, that is. Now, another thing worth noting about GBT 5.2 is that it's much better at long context reasoning, which ties directly into the whole improving real world capabilities thing. As they write here, in practical terms, this enables professionals to use GBT 5.2 to work with long documents, such as reports, contracts, research papers, transcripts, and multi-file projects, while maintaining coherence and accuracy across hundreds of thousands of tokens. So this is of course one of the major bottlenecks still left to solve with AI, the limited context window. And as we make progress on this, not only does it mean more jobs become automatable, but it will also unlock entirely new scientific breakthroughs that were never possible before. Think about fields like biology. If we can one day feed a model our entire genomic structure, plus all the relevant biochemical pathways, plus the clinical history, plus environmental variables, then all of a sudden, you can start running simulations, predicting disease risk, designing personalized treatments, things that are basically science fiction today. Finally, the last thing worth mentioning that we haven't really talked about yet is GBT 5.2's vision capabilities. OpenAI claims GBT 5.2 thinking is their strongest vision model yet, cutting error rates roughly in half on chart reasoning and software interface understanding. And what this means for everyday professional use is that the model can more accurately interpret dashboards, product screenshots, technical diagrams, or visual reports, supporting workflows in finance, operations, engineering, design, and customer support where visual information is central. So yeah, overall, this model looks very impressive. And while I haven't tested it out extensively myself, I'd say it's right up there with Gemini 3 Pro based on everything we just looked at. You could honestly make a case for either one being superior though, depending on the use case. And in terms of availability and pricing, starting today, GPT 5.2 Instant, Thinking, and Pro is rolling out in ChatGPT with paid plans getting it first. It's also available in the API, priced at $1.75 per million input tokens and $14 per million output tokens, with a 90% discount on cached inputs. This is actually pretty competitive with Google's pricing, which is surprising. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about OpenAI's new Frontier model, GBT 5.2. You guys think OpenAI just took the lead back from Google? Or does Google still reign supreme? Or maybe, is it too early to tell? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, please feel free to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.